All right, so now we want to switch to a different type of stochastic model called the continuous time macro chain, in short CTMC, which falls under the classification of discrete state space with continuous time process, okay? So the outline for this session will include a brief introduction to CTMC. Second, we'll be looking at the transition rates and probabilities. And finally, we'll take a look at some solved examples, okay? So let's begin with a brief introduction to CTMC. What is a continuous time markup chain? Well, by definition, a stochastic process X index T, where T belongs to a semi-open interval from zero to infinity, is called a continuous time markup chain if it has the following three properties. So one, the state space of the process is finite or countably infinite. Two, the index set of the process is continuous. And three, the process has the Markovian property, okay? So that is the conditional distribution that the chain will visit a future state J at this time, given that we are in current state I at time S, and some past state K at time U is independent of this past state and depends only on the current state. And that is exactly what we have on the right-hand side here, okay? So let's take an example. Let X in the state denote the weather condition from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So we can have our state space defined in this form. We have one to be equivalent to sunny. We have two to be equivalent to windy. We have three to be equivalent to wind. And we have four to be equivalent to cloudy. And we can also have our index set to be an interval of rare numbers from five to 11. We can actually visualize this process using the sample function. So this will give us a possible realization of the process. We have our index set on the x axis and we have our state space on the y axis. Now, it is possible that before 5 a.m., the weather condition was observed to be between rainy and cloudy. Around 5 a.m., the weather condition was also observed to be between um, windy and rainy. Around 6 a.m., we also observed the weather condition to be between these two states. So we can have this up to the 11th hour. Now, because the index set here is continuous or has a time component, it means that we have to take into consideration the weather condition within each interval of time, okay? So it is possible that we can observe the weather condition from 7.30 a.m. to let's say 8, 10 a.m. So it is important we take into consideration the weather condition within each interval of time. And it is also assumed that the weather condition for the next period will depend on the weather condition at the current period, okay? So this is an example of a continuous time macro chain. Let's take a look at some assumption and align the CT and C. So we assume that the transition probability from state I to state J is independent of the initial term, okay? And this will give us a time homogeneous macro chain. Now, if you take a close look at the index set, if you take the difference in the index set, we are going to obtain this result. And this T here is an interval of time which can also be expressed in this form. okay? So once we observe a transition probability from the current state to the next state such that it is independent of the initial time, then we are going to have a time homogeneous macro chain, okay? So now to the second session on transition rates and probabilities. Now take note that whereas in a discrete time macro chain, the interactions among the states are given in terms of transition probabilities. The interactions in the continuous time macro chain are usually specified in terms of rates at which transitions occur. So a continuous time macro chain in some states I at time T will move to some other states J at rate given by Q index IJ per unit time. In this manner, while a discrete time Markov chain is represented by its metrics of transition probabilities at step N, a continuous time Markov chain is represented by its metrics of transition rates at time T. So intuitively, you can um, see that the continuous time Markov chain has two components. The first component is the jump chain, which gives the transition probabilities. And the second component is the holding parameter that controls the amount of time spent in each state. So let me use our previous example as a case study here. So assuming we are in this state at time, at this current time, if we want to observe a transition from this state to the next state, this is given by the jump chain, okay, which is the transition probability from this state to the next state. That's the first component. 
And the second component is going to be the amount of time spent moving from this state to the next state, okay? Because now we have our index set to be continuous, okay? So we have to take into consideration the amount of time that is spent moving from this state to the next state, okay? And that is given by the parameter lambda or the holding parameter. Now we know from our previous tutorial that the distribution that can help us to describe a number of events occurring independently in an interval of time is the Poisson distribution, okay? So it can be proved that the transition probabilities for the continuous time lock chain can be obtained by using the expression from equation one. Now, if you take a close look at equation one, you can see that this expression here is similar to the Poisson distribution. Now we have our x factorial to be given by 2n factorial, and we also have it here to be given by 2n plus 1. And now the parameter is now a, a product of time, because now we are not just observing an event in any time interval, but we want, we want to observe an event in a sequence of time. Okay, so this will become a process. So now the parameter is now a product of time. Okay, now the matrix notation for the expression in equation one is given here, where Q is the matrix of the transition rates, also known as the generator matrix, okay, which is given by the expression in equation two. So from equation two, given that the system is in state I, right, at time T, the transition that it remains, or the probability that it remains in state I must decrease with time. So that's the reason why we have the negative here showing that once we're going to remain in the same state, the transition will um, decrease with time. And the probability that it will transfer to a different state, let's say J, must increase with time. So here, yeah, we don't have any negative attached to this. Let me use our previous um, example to illustrate this concept. So assuming we are in this state, okay, if there's no transition from this state to the, to the next state, it means that the rate at which we are going to remain in the same state will decrease with time. So that's the reason why we have the negative attached to this um, parameter lambda, okay? Now, if we are going to observe a transition from this state to the next state, it means that we are going to have the jump chain and that is given by the transition probability P index IJ, okay? That is given by this. Now the parameter lambda I here is showing us the amount of time spent moving from this state to the next state because now our index set is continuous. So we have to take into consideration the amount of time that is spent moving from this state to the next state. And this parameter lambda i follows an exponential distribution. Okay, we know that the exponential distribution is used to describe the time into the occurrence of a Poisson event. Okay. So that's the parameter lambda here, which follows an exponential distribution. Now, if we take a close look at this expression here, if you have to pull this exponential function back and take the summation on this, the same applies here. If you have to pull this back and take the summation on this, we are going to have this expression here, which is going to give us the hyperbolic function of the cosine, and this is similar to the hyperbolic function for sine, okay? So let's take a look at this remark. If we are to, from equation one, if we are to take the derivative of the transition probability with respect to time, we are going to obtain this equation and then the matrix form for the equation three. Similarly, if you have to take the derivative of this transition probability with respect to time, we also have this equation and then the matrix form for equation four. So equation three is often referred to as the Kolmogorov forward equation while equation four is referred to as the Kolmogorov backward equation. There's a proof behind this um, two equations, but I'm skipping that because it is very complex, okay? So let's take a look at some properties of the transition matrix for a continuous time Markov chain. So the transition matrix must satisfy the following properties. One, and when the transition probability matrix is zero at four times, then this will be similar to an identity matrix, okay? Secondly, um, the rows of the transition matrix must sum to one as usual. And finally, for all time S and T, we can have this expression in this form, okay? So let's try and take an example. Consider a continuous time Markov chain with two states, state zero and state one. Assuming holding parameters are given by lambda naught, which is equal to lambda one, which is equal to lambda, 
that is the time that the chain spends in each state before going to the color state as an exponential distribution with parameter lambda. So we want to draw the state transition diagram for the embedded chain or the jump chain. And second, we want to find a transition matrix for the continuous time of the chain. And finally, we want to find the generator matrix, okay? So let's take a look at um, the solution for the first one. So there are two states in the chain and since none of them are absorbing, we know what an absorbing state means, okay? That is, we do not allow self transitions. Therefore, the jump chain must have the point transition matrix, okay? So the transition from state zero to itself will be zero and the transition from state zero to one will be one. The same applies here, the transition from state one to zero will be one and the transition from state one to itself will also be zero. So this will be the corresponding state transition diagram of the jump chain, okay? So now to the second question, we want to find the transition matrix for the continuous time lack of chain. And we know from equation one that we can use this expression, okay? So the transition probability from state zero to itself at time t can be obtained using this expression, okay? Now the parameter is lambda, so we can pull this back at the exponential function so that we can have this. We know that this is similar to the hyperbolic function for cosine, which can also be expressed in this form. So once we multiply through, we are going to obtain this result. Now the transition probability from state zero to one at time t can also be obtained in this form. So we can rewrite this in this form, okay? So that this is similar to the hyperbolic function for sine. And once we multiply through, we obtain this, okay? Um, so because of symmetry in the process, it follows that the transition probability from state zero to itself will be similar to the transition probability from state one to itself at time t. And also the transition probability from state zero to one at time t will be similar to the transition probability from state one to zero at time t. So therefore we can have our transition probability matrix in this form for the continuous time mark of chain, okay? All right, so to the last part, we want to find the generator matrix. And we know from equation three that if you have to take the derivative of the transition probability matrix for the continuous time mark of chain with respect to time, we can have this expression, okay? So once we take the derivative, we are going to have this and we can factorize um, the exponential function out so that you can have this expression and this is similar to the generator matrix, okay? All right, so now to the next example, consider a continuous time mark of chain that has the jump chain shown in the figure below. So assuming lambda one is two, lambda two is one and lambda three is three. So the rate at which we are going to move from state one to other state is two. And the rate at which we are going to move from state two to other state is one. And the rate at which we are going to move from state three to other state is three. We want to find the generator matrix for this chain, okay? So let's take a look at the solution. Now the transition matrix of the jump chain can be obtained. Okay, this is coming from the diagram here. Okay, so that's the corresponding transition matrix for the jump chain. Now, given that lambda one is two, lambda two is one, and lambda three is three, the generator matrix can be obtained using the expression from equation two. So this was the expression from equation two. So the transition rate from state one to itself will decrease with time. So yeah, we know that lambda one is two, so the negative will affect it, which shows that it will decrease with time, okay? And also the transition rate from state one to two can be expressed in this form, all right? So we can yeah, use this expression. So we know lambda one to be two and the transition probability from state one to two is one. So once you multiply, you obtain this. And also the transition rate from state one to three can be obtained using this. So we yeah, had a transition probability from state one to three zero, so we can have this. Now if you have to do it for all the other rates, that's the transition rate from state two to one, to state two to three, and all the other transition rates, this will be the generator matrix, okay? All right, so this will bring us to the end of this session. Please, if you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.